Hello everyone and welcome back to One Man Stream. Today's episode is a follow-up to the episode that we released last week, which was our vMix UTC replay setup overview. Today is going to be more of an explanation and we're going to go behind the scenes and actually look uh, at the commands that we give to each one of these keys. Now one thing I will mention is if you're not familiar with button creation and you're not familiar with NDI monitor, which is what we have right here, I would suggest going to our second video, which is called a button explanation and NDI monitor. And it will give you a background on all that we're going to do today as far as button creation and how to utilize NDI monitor. So the first button that we're going to go over is this one right here. And this is the live toggle um button and it allows you to go in in and out of live mode in replay and let me see if i can bring this up real quick all right and if i move out of the way just a bit you can see that when i click on this live button here you can see it right here uh, where it's showing up uh, live and what that allows you to do is go out of live mode and, and what i call work mode where you can actually uh, make adjustments to your replay uh, without them being seen live uh, so when you want to be in live mode, uh, you make sure this red light's on. And when you do not want to be in live mode, uh, you click it again and that live mode goes off. And live mode on and off is controlled by this button right here. So let's take a look at it. And you can see when we scroll down under the, the command line that we're using is replay live toggle. And that's what allows us to push it once and have it come on and push it again and have it go off. Uh, the next region here that we're going to look at is the event lists. And uh, the way that this works is the command is replay selected event X and the event lists are numbered. The ones that we have created are numbered one through eight event list. One is going to say, is going to say replay selected event events X where X refers to the event list, which is one event list two. Uh, the command is replay select events X and in that one the event list is two and it's going to be so on and so forth down the line. This one would be list three, list four, list five, list six, list seven, and list eight. Okay, the next region we're going to look at is right here where we turn replay on and replay off and let's take a look at that command. The command to turn replay on is replay start recording and the command to turn replay off is replay stop recording so that makes sense you know, replay start recording to get it to come on and replay stop recording uh, to get it to go off this next region that we're going to look at is moving inside an event list and this button here is select first event so the command you would expect to say something similar and it does it says replay select first event and if you remember what this does, it allows us to move up and down in an event, in, in event list. And the select first uh, event button kind of gives us a place to start. And then the next two keys are going to allow us to move up and down within that event list. If we want to move down in the list, we'll use this button right here, which says select next event. So let's take a look at that command. And that, that command is replay, replay select next event. And if we want to move up in the list, that command says replay select previous event. Now this button here allows us to play whatever the last event is that we recorded. And this is a very handy button and I use it quite often. I actually have it set up in a couple different places. I set up right here next to the auto clip creation. So I can create a clip, a real quick, a quick five second clip. And if I like it the way that it is, as is, I'll just go ahead and click play last event. So let's see what uh, the command is for this. The command is replay select last event. And what that's going to do is the last event that we, that we created, it's going to go ahead and play that out. This next section is playing an event. So we're moving up and down in the event list. We found one that we want. We're going to use this key right here that says replay select event. And this is how the, the command reads, re, replay play selected event to output. And what that's going to do is whatever event we've selected from the list, uh, when we click on the button, it's immediately going to send it to output. 
Uh, this event right here, instead of playing selected event, we're going to play last event. So it's automatically going to play the last event within that event list. And that command is replay play last event to output. And most of these commands are pretty, pretty common sense. Uh, the next one is when we're going to play the entire event list. How we would use this is first we would select one of the event lists uh, from up here. So let's just say we're going to select uh, event list one. We're going to click on event list one and then we would click on this button here that says play event list. So let's look at that command. That command reads replay play all events to output. So what it's going to do is it's going to take that selected event list and it's going to play every event in that event list in sequence and it's going to send them all to uh, to output. The next key that we're looking at is uh, this one right here, which is uh, play or pause replay. And I have this in several places, uh, or I have it in a couple places. I have it right here, and then I have it again right here. And let's take a look behind this. And this says replay, play, pause. So if you click it once, it's going to play. If you click it again, it's going to pause it. Uh, it works kind of like a toggle switch. This next section here is moving an event within the list. So we have an event list and we're putting together a replay, say for first half highlights, and we're trying to select the sequence of those events. This allows us to do that. We can select a particular event and we can move it up or down in that event list. So let's see how this, is, uh, how this command is written. This command says replay move selected event up so that we would use that to move an event up the list. And then this one over here, this one says replay move selected event down. And that's what's going to help us to move an event down in the list. Uh, this next section is copy an event to another list. And uh, that is exactly what this is doing. What it's doing is uh, if we have an event, say an event one, uh, I mean, we have an event in list one and it's something that we want to include in maybe a first half segment or a second half uh, replay segment, or even to include it in the melt, which is a combination of all, our, all of our best highlights uh, from the entire production, what we'll want to do is we'll want to move it to another list. So let's see how this works. And what this says is it says replay copy selected event and then you have to select the event list. And the event list says zero, and you might say we don't have an event list, uh, a zero event list. Well, let me show you this. It actually only goes from zero to seven. And I showed you this, I gave you a, a, a little brief look at this. I'm gonna bring this up now. And if you look under replay move uh, last event, it's going to give you the value. And when you're working in the event lists, uh, it actually starts at zero. So zero would be your first event list. One would be your second. Two would be your third. Three would be your fourth. So that's one thing that you need to remember. All right, so let's take a look at one more. This is move clip to two. <clears throat> and actually, like I said in the last video, and I need to go ahead and change the uh, verbiage here because it is a little confusing. You're not actually moving you're actually copying a clip. So uh, let's look at this command. And as you would expect, this says replay copy selected event to the event list. And the event list is two, but it's going to be designated as one because the first event is designated zero. So the command's going to be the same for the rest of these. It's all going to be replay copy selected event. This one here would be event, event list two, event list three, event list four, event list five, event list six, and this one would be event list seven. And let's see if that's what it says. And that is exactly what it says. Replay, copy selected event to event list seven. Okay, this next section I'm not going to speak to at this time uh, because this is really for uh, if you have um, a vMix, the Pro Edition, where you can have uh, four uh, camera replay uh, the particular version that I have is the vMix 4K and I only have one camera pl uh, one camera replay uh, at this time. Uh, so this really isn't going to pertain uh, to this tutorial. Uh, but I'll go ahead and show you what it would look like. 
This would be replay X camera Y. The X is going to be the bus. So these are all going to be replay A. And then this is going to correspond to the particular camera. So this one would be camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four. And then let's go over to this one here. Notice this says bus A. Let's go over to this one here. And it's going to be similar. This is camera one, but it's bus B. So this would be replay X camera Y. So it's going to re replay X, which is going to be the bus and camera Y, which is going to be the first camera here. So all these are going to be replay B bus B. So this would be camera two, camera three and camera four. The next section we're going to look at is the auto clip creation. And this is what I use most often when I'm uh, using uh, this setup by myself. And let's go ahead and look at these buttons. The command is replay mark in and out. So you're marking in and out and the interval that we're going to do is a five second interval. So it's replay mark in and out with a five second interval. So it's going to take real time and then it's going to go back in time five seconds. This next one, same command, replay mark in out, but this time the interval is 10. On this one, the interval is 20 and on this one, the interval is 60. And then we're back to this uh, play last event again. And then that command is replay play last event to output. The next thing we're going to look at is the replay speed. And I talked to this and pointed it out in the previous video. The value of the replay speed is from zero to one. So this first one, it's going to be a decimal. So let's take a look at it. The command is replay set speed and the speed is 0.25. So that's going to give us 25% uh, of the original speed or quarter speed. This next one here is 50% and same command replay set speed. This time the speed is 0.50. This one here, it will be 0.75. When we want to run it at full speed, the replay speed will be set at one. Okay, moving down to the next section, which is replay direction. I'm going to show you this button first. And the reason why is I have two commands on this particular button. Whenever I want to go to play, pause, replay, and I want to click play replay, I want to make sure that I have it set in the forward direction. So on the command here, the first command is replay set direction forward, because I always want to make sure that I've got it going in the forward direction. I can always change it to reverse by the button uh, to the right of it, but I, I want to make sure that anytime I go to that replay button, when I first click it, the direction is going to be forward. So then the second command is replay play pause. We've already seen that. Let's go to the replay forward command. Set, no, I'm sorry, replay set direction forward. And then on the reverse, it is replay set direction backward. So that allows us to grab that replay and change direction on the fly. We can have it going in the forward direction and then we can also have it in the reverse direction. Uh, this next section says super slow-mo frame by frame. And the command for that is replay jump frames. And the interval that I have it set up is one. So it's just gonna move forward one frame. Every time I click the button, it's gonna move forward just one frame. If we're gonna go backwards by frame, the uh, command is going to be replay jump frames, but the frame is going to be in the negative direction. So each time we click that button, it's going to go back one frame. Uh, this section over here, manual clip creation, where we are manually marking the replay in and out. To mark the replay in, it's replay mark in. And to mark the replay out, it's replay mark out. And then there's player pause once again. If we want to change the uh, end point on one that we just made, or if we want to change the uh, in and out point of one of our pre-selected clips, uh, this is what we would use right here. And the command is replay update selected endpoint. And then this is replay updated select. Whoa, that's not right. This should be replay updated selected out point.
The last thing I'm going to show you here is, and I demonstrated this in the previous video, uh, where we can play the last event or play the selected event with Stinger. I'm going to show you this button first. And the reason why is when I created this button, replay, play last event to output, we've seen that before. But what I did is I check the execute box here and I created my uh, I created a link that says R RPL event for replay last event. So what I can do now is uh, when I want to do scripting for this, um, what I can do is I can just execute this command that I created for this button. And then when we execute that command, what it's going to do is it's going to replay last event to output. And on this one, this one is replay selected event to output. And I also created a link for it as well. And this one is RP event, which is just replay event. If you recall, the previous button was re was RPL event for replay last event. So this is how I uh, program this key in order to play the stinger first and then play the event. Okay, the first command is overlay input X in. And what that's going to be is a stinger. And we're going to do that on overlay channel three. And that stinger is actually about one and a half seconds. But what I do is I set the timer for two seconds. Uh, if you've watched any of the previous videos where I've uh, described uh, creating the, the scripting like this, the way that it works is it runs the first command and then immediately goes to the second command. So if I didn't have this timer in here, what it would do is it would um, run that stinger and it wouldn't give that stinger enough time to play out. What it would do is it would start running that stinger and then it would immediately take it out. So what we're doing here is we're going to start running that stinger. We know it goes for about a minute and a half. So we're going to make the, not a minute and a half, a second and a half. And so we're going to make that timer two seconds, which is 2000 milliseconds. And then when it's had a chance to play out, then we're going to bring that overlay channel out. And then we're going to execute that link uh, that we created in the, in the button right uh, in the button to the right of it. And we're going to execute that link. And the link is RPL event or replay last event. We're going to do the same thing with this button that we did to the previous one. We're going to bring that overlay channel in. We're going to do the timer for two seconds. We're going to take that um, stinger out and then we're going to execute the link that we made in this button right here. And that link was RP event. So the very last part of these commands here is we're going to replay the selected event. And that concludes our tutorial for today. I want to thank everyone once again for tuning in. Please make sure you give us a like and a thumbs up. And if you like what we're doing here, please make sure you subscribe so you'll be alerted as soon as new tutorials are posted. In our next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to this first page of this graphic layout. And I'm going to start talking about all the functionality that we have going on in here. About that, please keep your comments and your suggestions coming. And as always, Thank you.